Nagambi Naikang Chaudi, Ni Mige Kuri Nyuandarawu from New South Wales. So, hello, my name is Jody. I'm a uh, Kuri from New South Wales and uh, I belong to the Dharawal and Yuan Nation, so Yuan predominantly with Dharawal kinship ties. So I finished my PhD in 2021 uh, at Macquarie University. So outside of the PhD, I've only been working since 2022. Uh, so this go, about a year and a half in academia. Inside the PhD, uh, I was doing some teaching and working in academics uh, for about five or six years. And, but I've been working inside of ed education since uh, 2000, so for 23 years. So the PhD was the continuity of Dharawal and Yuan cultural practices. So essentially I was looking at uh, the cultural practices that, are, that, were, that were always practiced on our country, even though people didn't see it at times, uh, they were always there. So essentially looking at possum skin cloak making, so we always had that stitching and um, we, we kept that stitching and those stitches were handed down through sewing practices. Uh, we always had our fishing practices and we always had an element of our performance practices in dance, song and story sharing. And um, we all, our language was in some spaces underground as opposed to being spoken fluently. The postdoctoral project is about, uh, it has probably a few arms to it, uh, but it's essentially about using our cultural practice of story sharing and being able to show how our cultural practices have led other areas like the sciences and the social sciences. So it's embedded in sea country and it looks at um, following the whale migration period. Sea country is of the ocean effectively or not necessarily limited to the sea but our waterways. So inside of our culture we acknowledge and respect uh, Mother Earth, um, including our sea and also the sky. Um, those, the earth um, or the land, the sea and the sky hold our stories. And so we pay those respects. Yep, so our old ways of learning is still really prevalent today and perhaps inside of uh, areas that don't always see it, uh, it is still there. So if you take story sharing for instance, we had uh, ancient stories that were handed down from generation to generation that predate 1700. And one of those stories for us in our country is the story of Bandula and how Bandula moves across. So Bandula was our rain spirit and what it teaches us is before the rains come, uh, you get the wind comes first. So um, Bandula sends in Kurakai and then he sends in Ublagai, who's the storm spirit. And so you get the storm and then the rain comes. So in our warmer months, that's the weather pattern. Um, the, the southerly change comes, it brings in the cloud and the wind um, brings in the storm. Uh, you get an afternoon storm and then the rain comes, 
to cleanse and cool everything off and then the next day is a fresh day and it starts again. So in our story it's telling how Bandula travelled across the country and it teaches us that uh, weather pattern. And so science uses the Bureau of Meteorology to tell us that story. We use the environment to tell us the story and, and to, um, uh, I guess, prove the story. Um, if, if that's how people want to look at it. Um, we've known those weather patterns for many years and so our story sharing is starting to break down uh, how scientists can look at things through traditional ecological knowledges. The one that I've been working on at the moment is using story to uh, share for the whole community so that there's an understanding. And so the two projects that I worked on at the moment, or well, they've just been installed. One was a uh, what I call an interactive playscape and the other one is a seated area. The one tells the story of um, Gang Man Gang, which is how the Dharawal, um or the cultural custodians in our area came to be in our area. And it's through um, this story that we learn about um, migration patterns. Uh, and so there's a two metre whale, um, bronzed whale sculpture um, that's been put in place with a 1.8 uh, length cool two 1.8 length coolers um, for people to sit on, looking out to that spot where uh, that Dharawal people first came to. Uh, the other place is an interactive playscape that I worked with the local council on. It's a, actually a cultural map of the area, so it has a lot of our significant sites. But we went out and uh, interviewed the uh, kids of the community, um, both Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal, to see what they wanted. And they essentially didn't want a playground with a slippery dip and a swing, and they wanted a playground where they could climb, jump, run. Uh, and when they were finished doing that, they wanted a playground that they could kick a footy in. So they wanted, um, some of the other wants was a playground that they could walk through the bush that they could learn more about bush tucker, bush medicine, uh, and learn language. So uh, I came up with the concept to create a play area that maps our cultural, um, all the cultural significant sites in our city. And so um, there's a big sandstone wall um, made up of uh, about seven or eight sandstone blocks. Um, with carvings in them so they can rock climb up the wall, um, they can walk across the top of it, um, they can jump down off it, they can, there's a part there that mirrors our cultural site of our grandmother mountain that they can climb in and around. And so that's uh, what is, uh, it's a part of the Great Dividing Range, the Illawarra Escarpment, and it has a cultural story of its own that the kids can learn. Then they come in um, and in our city we have so, uh, like a little bit of open area um, where housing now is and then there's at the Lake Illawarra that, find, that you know, is the centre of our city almost or to the side of our city. And, um, and that has a story um, based on an island that's just off the entrance there and so those two things are marked and then there's another um, giant whale inside of there. Um, each of the significant sites are QR coded. So the kids can play, they can climb over the whale, they can jump, they can play in sand, they can run around this area. Um, off to the side is a bush tucker walk that they can walk um, through and learn a little bit more about bush tucker. Um, there's a pretend canoe that they can pretend to paddle. There's a, 
a gunya um, made and then sticks are put out each morning so they can have a crack at, you know, making their own gunya. Um, it's all QR coded so they can go to different places in our city and see these places. So the forest mimics black butt forest, the lake obviously, the uh, Windang Island. Anyway, all these significant places. There's a language wheel where they spin the wheel and they can hear Dharawal language being spoken. Um, there's a weather wheel. Uh, but at the end of the day, when if they're finished doing that, they can go out, there's a big green area where they can kick a footy or play touch or whatever they want to do. And the beautiful part about that space is really, it was designed by the kids the wants and needs of the kids, but it's right in the middle of the city. It's in the city centre and it's like a playground that's got bush in the middle of the city. And so you walk out there and you feel like you're in the middle of the bush. So Artie Mary was um, my auntie, so to, and you know, one of the people who passed on a lot of cultural knowledges to me and shared stories and, and really taught me um, about understanding bureaucracy, I guess. And so winning an award um, that's named after her is like, you know, recognition from your elders. And so, so that was important to me uh, and, and to my family uh, to, to win, you know, my own auntie's award. Uh, how does it position? I think it, uh, for a small snippet in time, will give me a little bit of a platform to have a voice to utilise um, story sharing to help break down barriers that Aboriginal people face within our community and uh, put a different light on it where, and show um, organisations and government departments how story sharing can be a powerful tool for them to use um, to make change for our people. Wow, that's a big one. <laughs> uh, I think, you know, uh, universities are trying, they're, they're, they're moving along, which is always important. Um, and they have come, I've only been inside of the academy for a little, little while, and maybe it's a reflection of me being at RMIT, um, but I felt like at Macquarie and at RMIT, they really privileged voices of Aboriginal people and RMIT in particular um, privileged voice through story sharing and allowed me the latitude to be able to show how sh sharing stories can impact different areas such as the sciences or geographies and in a positive way. So in that respect, I think the academies are slowly moving forward and understanding that uh, there's not one way to necessarily deliver. I, th I feel like when you have Indigenous-led research, uh, it comes with a different lens it, and and I probably haven't had a lot of experience in non-Indigenous led research um, so my comments may not be entirely correct but I felt in I've been lucky enough through my PhD was Indigenous led I was able to privilege voices um, my fellowship, uh, I've been able to surround myself with positive people who want to privilege voices of Aboriginal people. So 
I think Indigenous-led researchers come with that community focus that, um, you know, if we take something from community, we need to give back to community. What are we leaving into the community? I guess some of the past criticisms of academia have been that researchers come in, they do a whole lot of research, they go and there's nothing left back in the community, so or we never see people again. So I think having more Indigenous-led researchers um, is having a two-pronged approach. Um, by leaving things back inside of the community, the community are a little bit more open to talk to um, both the Indigenous researcher but also when we say, or oh, these people want to ask about the scientific side of it or about, uh, you know, the geography side of it, then um, people are willing to open up just that little bit more. And we're working with researchers who want to privilege our voice. So they're working out what, can we, what are we going to leave back for the community as well. So I think there's that real shift in understanding. <laughs>